We have a question from Ryan. I was out riding my bike recently when a driver made a close pass as I was approaching a huge pothole. The car was probably doing about 40 or 50 miles per hour. I was probably doing about 20. There was other cars behind which were also lining up to overtake. I was left with no choice but to try and bunny hop the pothole. I think that if I had hit it directly, I would probably have come off the bike. And with cars around me, that would have been very bad. Thankfully, I watched an old GCM video about bike skills years ago and bunny hopping was mentioned. So the idea to try it was in my head. So he'd never done a bunny hop before. I guess I should email them as well and say thanks. Anyway, I'm interested to know what skills you think a strictly road-only cyclist could use for their safety. Thanks, Ryan. That's actually a really interesting question. Being able to look behind you while going the same line. Mm. Useful. Yep. Unclipping nice and early if you're using clipped-in shoes. Gears and cleats is a, is a thing I always used to say. Get yourself in an easier gear and get ready to clip out. Mm-hmm. Uh, I actually think hand signals fall into this as well. Yeah. So like I make lots of movement when I'm riding because I kind of work on the basis of I want road users to know what I'm going to do. So even if I'm going to move out to take a safer line on the road, I will put my arm out as if I'm indicating to go right so that the car behind me knows I'm doing something which is ultimately blocking a chunk of the road. Um, so I think using arm signals and shouting at people and stuff is also a very good important skill mm-hmm. yeah i'm trying to think what i would do in that situation because there's absolutely no chance i'd be bunny hopping a pothole i'm as i think i would just slow down slow down to a stop if necessary would that be safe i don't know what the answer is sudden stop in the road unless there's not space yeah and there's still cars well, i'm assuming up. in this case there wasn't space otherwise you can just go around it but potentially what may help is sticking his arm out yeah because if you a lot of the time if you stick your arm out as an indicator it, what a car does it goes oh that put that there's a cyclist in front of me and they i don't know what they're going to do the worst yeah. case scenario is they go i don't know what they're going to do so i should probably just like chill out a sec it usually buys you a bit of extra time to make a decision make a maneuver um it obviously doesn't always work um but i, I kind of i'm kind of with him i'm glad he had the idea of bunny hopping yeah yeah totally and, and it is sensible because sometimes um when it rains up in the northeast, a lot of water ends up sitting on the roads. And our mate Harry Mack had broke his collarbone because he went through a puddle and it happened to have a massive pothole in it. So I don't like plowing through puddles. One, because it's messy and you get wet, uh, even if it's not raining. But you don't know what's in that puddle. Do you know what he needed? What? Inflatable bib shorts. <laughs> yeah, yeah. His collarbone's all right now. That's good. Uh, I actually, interestingly, and I, that wasn't the point of us reading out this question, but I actually used my Garmin Varia radar for the first time ever last week or a couple of days ago. <laughs> and the bit, the bit I was surprised <laughs> at for like a year. Have you been using it just as a light? Yeah, I hadn't turned the camera function on. Um, I don't like technology. Okay. <laughs> There's too much of it. But it was part of your New Year's resolution, Jimmy, that you were going to start recording. Well, drivers. yeah, and, and, and I did. Well, so I, I got my new bike built up. Uh, I got, got everything working on it, and I spent the time to connect all my sensors and just get everything set up properly. Um, and what I was really surprised at with the radar is how far away the cars are at, at the first point that it notifies you that there's something there. Mm. So it's the, it's... Where it works really well in the lanes up here is is it allows me to go, actually, there's a, there is a car behind me, but I know it's like a decent way off. If I look up the road, 40, 50 meters up the road, I can see there's a big puddle or there's a big pothole. So it gives me plenty of time to move out and take a more dominant position in the road, knowing that their car is going to be catching up to me in, in, in the more distant future. And it's like far enough away that you can't hear them. Like you don't know there's a car there, but the mm. radar is is telling you there's something there. And I was surprised how good that was. Also, there was someone which passed me that at the time I was enraged at because I was like, that was a close pass. I'm going to pull that up on the camera and I'm going to report them to the police. <laughs> and I then looked it on the camera and realized they were pretty much as far away as they could could be. It was like a single Yeah, track. it was just a, a, a lane. So yeah. they were a, mo- pretty much all the way onto the other side of the road. But because it was narrow, it felt really close. And what the Varia also did was it tells me my speed and the speed of the other vehicle. So I was going 25 miles an hour and the car passed me at 61 miles an hour. 
So although it was about a meter away from me, meter and a half away from me, because it was going 60 miles an hour, it felt like it was inches away from me. And I thought that was actually an interesting lesson from that as well. Mm. We should say as well, we are sponsored, but this channel is sponsored by Garmin. It is, yeah. This section is not sponsored by Garmin, but the no. reason that we have the technology is because of that. Mm. They'll be well happy that you finally used the, the radar. <laughs> I was disappointed I didn't get to report anyone to the police though. So yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll report back on that in the future. Uh, what other skills should he learn? The thing that helped me most with my bike skills was commuting. And that was because there's a lot more situations where you have to speed up and stop your, your balance. Mm. The c more comfortable you can get with your balance on your bike, whether that's being one handed, whether that's slowing down and trying to turn, whether that's trying to pedal softly, just everything like that. Be feeling confident and comfortable on your bike helps you in sticky situations, I think. That, that is, you, yeah, you've just made me realize one, uh, or a dig down into one of the things you nailed there, slow control at slow speeds. Because I think that's why a lot of people get scared on when they're climbing as well. Yeah. Because you end up having to go really, really slow to be at an appropriate power or heart rate, however you want to man monitor it, manage it. And people then start to feel like they're going to fall off because they're going slow. Mm. Whereas actually, if you get better at riding really, really slow, you realize that you, you, you're you not going to fall off. 100%. Does anyone else have trouble going turning in one direction when they're going <laughs> like slow? Like not an ambi-turner. Yeah, I'm yeah. not an ambi I find it very difficult to turn left. Yeah, I can't, I can't turn right yeah. as well as left. I'm assuming it must be something to do with dominant. I'm left-handed, mm. I can't turn left. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Well, I'm glad it's not just me because, no, yeah, true. if I'm ever going to fall off, it's going to be to the left. You want to practice um, turning while clipped in without unclipping a pedal. Exactly. As well. That's like what that. it is. So yes. the Velociposse Cycling Club in London, they prioritize slow skill sessions instead yes. of like club rides or races and things like that. That's their main thing. Um, and a lot of them then end up riding track stuff off the back of it. And it's true. You learn the slow skills first and then you build it into the faster riding and it just makes you so much more confident. Because when you have loads of inertia and you're going quick, the bike just stays up, doesn't it? It's easy. Yeah. Like on the cobbles. Like on the cobbles. Exactly. You've made me realize why I can't turn left because I clip out on the right. Yeah. So there's something about the confidence of knowing you can put your foot down. Mm -hmm. Oh, I, 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 can, I can give you something which forces you to learn and be stepping off cyclocross. Yeah. You have to be able to just get on and off any side it's just you just have to mm. 